So, you've bought Darkest Dungeon 2, and you're ready to go slay all the baddies out there, ready to kill everything in sight and cause mayhem and destruction. You get to your brand new stagecoach, get to the crossroads, ready to pick out your baller death machine team, only to realize you're stuck using four heroes. And one of them is the Grave Robber. No, God, please, no, 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 no! So what do you have to do to get actual good heroes unlocked? Well, you gotta get some Candles of Hope and spend them at the Altar of Hope. So, in this video, I'm gonna go over the best ways to get candles early and how to spend them once you get them. So, what are candles of hope? Candles, sometimes just called hope in game, are essentially the game's meta currency. They're earned through a variety of means during the course of a run and are the only currency you can use outside of the run itself, unlike baubles and relics, which get discarded at the end of the run. They're used to unlock progression at the Altar of Hope to get items, heroes, memories, skins, and permanent buffs to make your runs go smoother. They're very important, but getting them can be a bit of a pain, especially early on. There are a few ways you can earn candles through the course of a run. The first is to take Wanderer heroes at the crossroads. Wanderers are the base path that all heroes are when you start a run. While they lack specialization, you can earn a few additional candles by taking them into your runs. It's not many, but even four candles early on can be the difference between that next unlock you wanted, or sitting there wondering why you're using a Grave Robber hitting for 4 damage instead of a Chad Leper hitting for 15. The next is to check the hero's goals themselves. Every hero spawns at the crossroads with a goal. At the early game, these goals will be relatively easy, giving you a small reward for completing them, but as you progress, you'll get harder rewards that will earn you more candles. It can be a good idea to check all of your available heroes at the crossroads and see which ones have goals you think you can get. This will help you in the early game and you can check the status of these goals in the goals tab during your run. Another way to gain candles through the run is to go to the candle nodes. When you check the map, you'll see that some of the nodes have a small little candle icon below them. By going to these nodes, you'll earn a candle. This can add up to quite a lot by the end of the run, so it can definitely pay to choose these nodes over others if you're grinding for candles. Some other ways to earn candles are through region goals. These can be seen on the region select page of the inn. By collecting the task or meeting a restriction given to you in this goal, you can manage to snag a few extra candles. Completing regions themselves will also give you candles, the sluice being a region that actually gives you an extra reward for completing it. Of course, getting a win gives you more candles, and getting your first victory will give you even more candles on top of that. One thing to keep in mind is that hiring the bounty hunter will cost you four candles at the end of your run, so be cautious hiring him if you're on that candle grind, even though he is really freaking cool. Now it's good to understand that some of the candles you earn will actually fill your inventory. You'll see them in the inventory tab, these candles can only stack up to three, unless you have the collector chandelier stagecoach item equipped, which lets you stack them up to seven. In early runs, it'll be up to you to decide if the candles taking up these slots are worth not taking other items instead that could help you win the run. It's a balancing act for sure. So, now you have some candles, but getting them back to the altar is easier said than done. Leaving a run mid-region or losing all four of your heroes will slap you with a severe punishment to your candles earned, and this can be a huge drag, especially when you've put a lot of time into that run. Sometimes it just pays to cut your losses early if you don't think you're equipped to handle the later regions. So, when you get to an inn, you'll have an option to leave the run early and collect all the candles you've earned up to that point without punishment, both in your inventory and not. You can see how many candles you'll get in this tab at the end. Just hit the collect hope button at the end and take your candles to the altar. Now there is a point at which if you do lose, you won't take a hit to your candles. And this is done by beating the mini boss that guards the final node before the last end. If you manage to defeat this boss, you'll be rewarded by not losing any candles from that point forward, even if you die horribly on the mountain. Do be warned though, this mini boss is no pushover. If you team wipe to him, you'll not see many of the candles you've earned, so good luck. Now you've amassed a horde of candles and you've finished a run, it's time to spend them. The Altar of Hope is the first place you'll travel to in between runs, and it's here that you'll get the chance to dump all of your candles into all sorts of fun things. There's a lot of options here, and it can be very, very overwhelming to new players. It's still overwhelming to me, and I've been playing for like 800 hours. So here are my recommendations for what things you should be spending them on. The first thing I usually recommend is going to the Living City, and at least unlocking a few, 
if not all of the heroes. This will open up your options for runs and make the grind for candles feel less repetitive. It's pretty cheap to unlock them all. I think this is really important early on so you just don't burn out as quick. Now, some people might recommend unlocking just a few heroes and pumping candles into their unlock trees specifically. This can be good if you want to make a single meta team and grind candles with every run. Nothing wrong with that approach either. It's probably a fair bit quicker, honestly, but it's just a little bit less fun in my opinion. Next, I would recommend going to the Intrepid Coast area and getting a few of the unlocks here. The journey upgrades for the stagecoach will give you more inventory slots, better candle drop rates, and armor and wheel tokens. These are all huge for giving you a better chance at winning runs. The resourcefulness tree unlocks will give you benefits whether you reach certain nodes. I would highly recommend unlocking up to the point where you get more money at the first in, as this can really open up your options early in your runs. It gives you the option to buy more things. Other unlocks here will give you other passive benefits at different nodes, so do make sure to read through all of them, see which ones you might like and go ahead and unlock those ones. I would avoid unlocking much else at the coast besides the very first pet. The Orphan Wolf Cub is a huge benefit to new players, giving you a helpful stress relief boost and passive positive relationship chance. It's definitely a very good early investment. If you unlock just this pet, it will spawn at the start of every run and it only costs one relic to buy. Now you can unlock up to the first three pets and that will guarantee that those three pets will always spawn if you want to try a couple different ones, but once you unlock more than that, do realize that it will be random which three pets spawn at the first in. Then after this, I recommend just dumping any spare candles you have into the working fields. Here you'll unlock trinket, combat, stagecoach, and in items. These will all be added to your loot pool in the following runs, giving you way more options to play with and adding a lot more variety to the runs. A personal recommendation is to at least unlock in items until you get the first food item that you can find. It could be apples and cheese or bread or steak, but at least that way you're not stuck eating only slime mold, which can be really crappy. Remember, any items you unlock here will be in your inventory automatically in the next run, so you get to try them all, so you might as well unlock a few and give them a shot. I would recommend avoiding unlocking anything in the Timeless Wood at this point until you've gotten most everything else unlocked. Memories are very much a candle sink for late game profiles and really won't give you much benefit early on, so just save that for when you've unlocked most of the other things. And after that, it's really up to you and your playstyle. Maybe you want to focus on a few certain heroes, getting items into the loot pool, whatever really. There's loads of options, and there's no wrong choices here. Just go out there, spend your candles, and destroy them all. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, do make sure to subscribe and consider joining the Discord. We're doing weekly game giveaways there. Super fun stuff, and I will see you in the next video.